from Beirut. And uh, Dorsa, with the attacks, these attacks that we've seen with houses and cars on fire in the Israeli city of Haifa, it's not something we see very often, Hezbollah seemingly able to regroup. What are they saying about that attack near Haifa? Well, according to statements issued by Hezbollah, they fired at least 115 rockets towards Israel. And uh, it, some of those rockets um, had the longest range that we've seen so far um, by Hezbollah. Uh, 50 kilometers inside Israel is what their target was near Haifa. And um, specifically uh, the military airbase Ramat David. That is, of course, where the Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant uh, last week announced that Israel is now entering a second phase, a uh, new phase of its conflict in northern Israel with Hezbollah. Um, this attack, of course, comes during a very, very tense uh, time. We've seen intense and heavy bombardment from Israeli forces on southern uh, towns and villages in Lebanon. And the Israelis have also issued statements, the Israeli military, saying that they have continued to attack various uh, installations and weapons depots belonging to Hezbollah, not only in southern Lebanon, but also uh, near the area's town of um, Zalaya in the western Bekaa Valley in eastern Lebanon. So there is a sense that this conflict is certainly escalating. now. Uh, uh, Hezbollah responding to not only the rocket attacks that they've been witnessing and the airstrikes in southern Lebanon, but also that walkie-talkie attack and the pager attack that two days uh, last week, the uh, communication devices exploded um, and injuring thousands of members of Hezbollah and killing uh, over a dozen people. Uh, they said that the response that Israel has seen over the past few hours is in retaliation to that attack. Of course, uh, we expect things to continue as they have been over the past few hours with really no end in sight in this cross-border fire. The uh, Lebanese health ministry also saying that there has been one person killed and another injured in the um, Aitarun uh, village. This is a border village in southern Lebanon as well. And also with Israel saying it's going to intensify its attacks, what is the mood like in Beirut, especially after such a deadly and unprecedented week in Lebanon? Certainly, uh, over the past week, 84 people have been killed in Lebanon uh, over a number of attacks carried out by Israel. And the statements coming from Israeli officials that these attacks will continue is certainly a cause for concern here because as of Friday, we saw a new uh, level of escalation that the boundaries that had been in place, the unwritten rules of engagement, meaning civilian population centers would not be attacked, seem to have gone out the window. The Friday attack in southern uh, Beirut in Dahia that killed 16 members of Hezbollah, including two high-ranking commanders and a number of other civilians, indicates that the uh, this conflict has now entered a new stage. And there is concern here that the civilian population are now going to be uh, caught in the crossfire. So things are very tense here, and certainly people are worried. But Hezbollah maintaining its position that it will continue to fight despite the attacks that has come under. And also, thank you very much for for that, that is Dorsa Jabari with the latest live in Beirut. And we're going to bring in our defense editor, Alex Gotopoulos, because there is so much to talk about right now, Alex. Firstly, as we've been reporting, it is the largest exchange of cross-border strikes we've seen between Israel and Hezbollah since last October. What can you tell about the types of rockets, the weapons that they're using in these attacks? So Hezbollah has uh, three types of weapons in its arsenal that's going to be used for longer range attacks inside Israel itself. First, you have the, the Katusha unguided rockets that's got about 40 kilometers range, uh, small warheads. Because they're unguided, you need to fire them in salvos in order to be able to have any discernible military effect. Um, and they're easily intercepted, especially by Iron Dome, Israel's um, primary tactical air defense system. But then you have longer range rockets at the two, 300 kilometer range, like the Fatah 110, the Zelzal 2. These are able to deliver larger warheads. We're talking like five, 600 kilos mm -hmm. with fair accuracy by this sort of stage. So they can do real, real damage. 
But there's a third type of weapon, the, the drones that um, Hezbollah have been using, that seem to have exploited a gap in Israel's air defense systems. So it's one of the best in the world, if not the best. But time after time after time, Hezbollah has been able to send drones slower moving, less observable on radar, has been able to send them through, they penetrate through into Israeli airspace and destroy targets with much higher precision than any of the rockets or missiles. And of course, Hezbollah released that footage earlier this year, drone right. footage showing the port of Haifa, right. uh, which was really a remarkable moment in Hezbollah's intelligence capabilities, that it could not just penetrate the Iron Dome, but gather intelligence of sensitive sites. What do we know about the right now, the intelligence capabilities on both sides, especially after the assassination of the latest Hezbollah commander mm -hmm. in here and reports mm. that Israel had intelligence that he would be there at that time. Right, exactly. And also a mass assassination program conducted by pages and other electronic devices. It doesn't get any more intelligence led than that. And you're absolutely right. The, the, the Hezbollah drone footage was extraordinary in the sense that they just didn't do it once. Uh, they did it several times over several days and they live streamed the pictures. High quality you know, they flew over the targets in broad daylight, slow moving over Haifa port, over Raphael, which 